Everybody kind of settle in. I think we're going to, I'm going to, about to call the meeting to order. And so, um, let's see. My name's Eli Bosch, and I'm the interim chair of the council. And I want to, of course, welcome everybody here. Not only people are here because they're members of the council and faculty and administration, but most certainly the students who are here. So um, it's probably going to be an interesting meeting. I would appreciate. Um, and that if everybody would be courteous to one another, some people may speak later who uh, may be in disagreement with beliefs held. And I would just ask us to, to use common courtesy uh, during the meeting. Also, there may be people coming in and out from class, and we're going to try and keep it as uh, calm as possible. One of the members of the council is going to be on the phone and coming through the speaker. But I think everybody else is here in person. So I call the meeting to order. And welcome to one and all. You're going to get an opportunity to speak uh, as part of a public forum in a little bit of while. Okay. Um, and this is probably going to, I don't know how long we're going to go, but we're anticip anticipating that we uh, will go for some time to give everybody the opportunity to speak. But we have a, a hard and fast closing time because the room, at, I think it's 6.30, will have to be used for another group, just to keep that in mind. Um, I know the minutes have been circulated by the council members, and uh, would anybody make a motion? I make a motion. Okay. Thank you, all. <coughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, for my report, uh, I really don't have a formal report. I'm really um, quite pleased that there's so many people here. I know that Hasbro Building Complex is an important issue. It's of interest to uh, the students, the faculty, the community, as well as, I would say, the public at large. So uh, we're very, very thankful that people have appeared here at this meeting. Uh, last time, there was not very many people here. It was very, very early in the semester. So you're all welcome here, and you're welcome to speak at a little um, point later in, in our program. And we have some business that we attend to first. And then we'll go on to the public speaking, and then there'll probably be a video and some uh, uh, some uh, discussion. So, with that, I would ask uh, President Christian if he has a report. I do. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all for uh, being here today. Uh, in the interest of time and in uh, recognition of the keen interest in uh, the topic of the Hasbro Building Complex, I'm going to keep my report fairly brief, I'm, and I'm going to focus specifically on. Uh, the, the topic at hand today. Um, I think it's most appropriate if council members defer any questions about my report until uh, we discuss the resolution uh, at, at hand today. And I would echo the, uh, um, the suggestion from uh, Mr. Bash that this is a, an official business meeting, and so I ask you to refrain from <coughs> expressing your appro approval or disapproval of any particular views that are expressed uh, so that we don't have a chilling effect on the conversation. Uh, we've recently provided council members with information that responded to some of the questions that came up at the September 6th College Council meeting, and that included more extensive evidence of slave ownership by the original Huguenot uh, patentee families, and also a confirmation by SUNY Legal Council uh, after their review of state education law that while the council has the authority uh, to name buildings and grounds, this and other uh, council actions are subject to the approval of the SUNY Board of Trustees. We also shared with the council uh, in that recent mailing two resolutions supporting the removal and uh, replacement of the Hasbrook names as both the Diversity and Inclusion Council and as I as President uh, have recommended. 
One of those resolutions was passed in spring 2018 by the Student uh, Senate, and the other was passed this fall by the Faculty Senate by a 51 to 0 margin uh, with uh, two extensions. Uh, I want to comment briefly, uh, summarizing several points that I wrote to council members about. Um, first, I, I see it as unfortunate if we treat slavery on other continents and in other periods of history as equivalent to the background uh, that's most relevant to the issue that we face today of names on campus buildings. Colonial slavery in the Americas uh, has had a unique and enduring impact on education, employment, health, um, and near, nearly all systems in this, in this country. Uh, and not every colonist chose to uh, engage in this practice. The, the Quakers uh, conspicuously did not. We all live with this enduring legacy and how it continues to play out in our, in our society, especially on a college campus uh, in the daily experience of students of color. But students across all demographics uh, are increasingly calling for institutions to be accountable to the values of inclusion. Uh, and if we're not able to demonstrate that ability to evolve in our understanding, we'll not be able to serve future generations of New York citizens, as is our mission. I've heard the characterization uh, that by recommending these names be replaced, we're, quote, erasing history. And I disagree with that view. Uh, quite the contrary, we want to be certain that we portray relevant history more fully. That includes the history of Huguenot patentees and their descendants and their positive contributions, along, of course, with the history of slavery. Uh, it also includes the history and contributions of enslaved Africans and their descendants uh, and the indigenous peoples who were here before the Europeans and Africans. These people have been treated through our history as the other, um, and their stories have often been ignored or minimized by many assessments that's a specific legacy of slavery. I spoke at the previous meeting on September 6 about my deepening uh, empathy uh, throughout last year's process for students and others whose life experiences are quite different than mine. Uh, I listened to students and others talk about the alienation uh, that they felt to live, eat, and sleep in buildings named for those who enslaved Africans. My direct experience through that process and the careful analysis of the Diversity and Inclusion Council uh, made it clear to me that only by changing the names uh, could we honor those experiences and perspectives. And I hope that council members as well can be open-minded as you consider this issue and give more weight to the evolving population at SUNY New Paltz and their particular needs. That is helping the college be increasingly attractive to a wide range of students from diverse backgrounds Increasingly, uh, these are the students of our future. I would also appeal to the council members to respect what many of us regard as an exceptional process of campus and community engagement uh, in, this, in this issue. This process, process brought uh, members of our community together to understand shared values, uh, was forward-looking in scope while not ignoring the past, uh, and generated overwhelming support for the change uh, that we're recommending. That support comes from students, faculty and staff, many of whom are here in the room today, uh, many alumni, our campus leadership team, and certainly me as president. I've kept the SUNY uh, chancellor and the chair of the SUNY Board of Trustees uh, informed of our process from the very start and of my position uh, on this matter. They've been supportive and they're very eager to hear the outcome of the College Council deliberation. My point here in sharing this, uh, these last points is that this has been a very serious undertaking uh, and I hope that as the College Council charged with acting in the best interest of the college in our future, uh, you'll give full consideration to the depth and breadth of thought and effort that was invested in this process. I want to close with a comment about our process. Uh, from the very start, I intentionally structured this effort to keep our focus initially on whether these buildings, building names should change or not without the complication of considering alternative names. The Council's consideration today is the first step uh, in what we should all regard as a, a process that must involve two steps, uh, even though those two steps should be closely linked. So if the Council votes to change the names, the next step will be determination of the new names. And the Council should lead that process with community input uh, certainly, we all need to recognize that approval of the new names is within the authority of the College Council. 
if we move ahead, and I would encourage the council to complete that early step in the spring semester, uh, if the council votes to change the names and when those new names are determined, uh, we will take a single resolution to the SUNY Board of Trustees to change the names and replace them uh, with specific new names. Certainly, we all need to recognize that the current names on these buildings will not be removed uh, and replaced until after that step is completed. So that constitutes uh, my report. Thank you. Okay. Well, th thank you ver very much for that um, overview. Um, <coughs> what we're going to do first is have Nadella, who is the Student Association President. Are we going to go around and introduce oh, well, the council Oh, sure. Here we go. Um, <laughs> here we go. I know somebody, some of you have to go to class, right? Raise your hand. Anybody have to run out of here? Okay, so, so okay. you don't know me, but I get a room like this. I'm going to lock the door and keep here at 9 o'clock. But since the president would like me to introduce and you probably want to be aware of who, who is here and why they're here, I guess we'll go around the room and say hello. So, Tahina, why don't you just introduce yourself, say what your role is here, and I'll let everybody know. Thank you, Eli. My name is Tahina Pacheco Don, and I'm co chair of the Diversity and Inclusion Council and Chief Diversity Officer. I'm Reynolds Scott Childress. I'm the co-chair of the Divers Diversity and Inclusion Council, and I teach history here. My name is Ann Vallant, and I'm presiding officer of the college faculty and a faculty member. My name's Robin cohen -Laval. I'm the alumni council rep and ex officio non-voting member. I'm Michael E. Catalanato. I'm a member of the college council. Eleanor Venables, member of the college council. I'm uh, Ron Law. I'm a graduate of New Paltz in 1974. Also, I was president of student body for two years when I was here. And I'm a member of the council, and I also served on the diversity committee. And I'm Eli Bosch. I'm a uh, interim chair of the council. I've been involved in New Paltz. I've been the president of the foundation. I've been involved for approximately 30 years, either the on the council or on the foundation. and. Uh, I'm a very big proponent of public education and diversity. Don Christian, President. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Adana, and I'm the Student Association President. And a voting council member. Yes. Vincent Casalino, also a graduate of this university and a college council member. Michelle Halstead, Vice President for Administration and Finance. Lauren Bateston Arnold, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Stephanie Blaisdell, Vice President for Student Affairs. Shelley Wright, Vice President for Communication and Chief of Staff. David Eaton, Vice President for Enrollment Management. Eric Marks, Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations and Executive Director of the Sydney New Paltz Foundation. Okay. Now I guess we're going to see. And Ron on, on, on the phone. Is there some? Oh, here. No, Robert, Robert, Robert on the phone. Robert. Oh, Robert, Robert, I'm sorry. Hey, Robert, say hello. Robert DiCarlo, a graduate of 79 and a member of the College Council. Thank you very much. Um, I guess we're going to go to the movies now. There's going to be a video uh, that Nadella's uh, participating in this production, and that's going to be helpful uh, for the public comment period and for the evaluation of uh, what is likely to be a resolution. And um, the devil's, as you know, is your president of the Student Association and a voting member um, of the council. And I want to roll it. Hi, everyone. First, I just want to thank everyone that's sitting here right now. I really do appreciate it. Um, the purpose of this video is basically to bring a voice behind the people that responded to the survey. Because there was a comment made last meeting that there were students here, and the um, the amount of students that said yes to the vote were under 50 percent. So this was one of the projects the association did to make a video and bring a voice behind the students that were um, behind the percentages of the survey. So hope you enjoy it. Is my head in the way? <laughs> Angry. Uncomfortable. Frustrated. <coughs> Disappointed.
was not aware of the names of the Hasbro Complex building names. Um, no, I very vaguely, and I didn't know. No. I was aware of the history of the names of the Hasbro Complex. Um, second semester of my freshman year, I'm a sophomore now. Um, they held a forum in the NPR, and that's when I learned more about it. They spoke briefly about it in BS pre BSD last year, but then I got more information about it at the forum um, spring semester in the NPR. Well, first I was introduced to um, the names by my comp teacher my freshman year here. She actually took us to the New Polk Cemetery so that we can actually see the graves of like the people from these families. But she never told us that they were slave owners or anything like that. So I didn't understand the true history of the names or the people behind the names until um, SA's program, Let's Talk, where they actually told us like who these people were and why they're so important to New Polk's. So it was a part of Student Association, we hosted the Let's Talk event, and during this Let's Talk event, I provided the history of the individuals who the buildings were named after. So during that time, I did intense research um, to look at these individuals and see who they were and like, what they've done in the past. And that is when I started to learn about their history. I also did a Huguenot street tour, where part of the tour takes you down to the slave quarters of where the slaves live. Um, I'm a sophomore in Student Impulse now, and I didn't know until a few weeks ago when I went to a program. And I feel like it should be a requirement that everyone that's even thinking about coming to the school should be, know, they should know that the buildings here are named after slave owners while they're touring with their families. And if they think that that's not a good idea, then maybe that's more reason to change it. Informed about the names of the Hasbro Complex buildings, when um, the Let's Talk event was hosted by a student association, which I happen to be a part of as well, um, Pink, Nadella, and Nazareth were able to go into detail about what each name of the individuals did and um, their reputation during that time. I was completely astonished at the fact that they were names of slave owners. Um, because we're living in a harsh time where- Student Association, the organization I'm a part of, uh, held an event called Let's Talk, where they went really in depth about each name of the buildings in the Hasbro Quad, and I learned a lot more about what each person did, um, what was their history in regards to the town, and what other affiliates and organizations, not organizations, but uh, groups they were a part of. They should be renamed. I think they should be changed. Yes, I believe the names should be changed. Or live in buildings where it's named after a person who enslaved their own race, and I think that's highly uncomfortable. Change. There's no reason that students of color and students in general should have to sit, live, eat in these buildings. Because as a black student on this campus, I think it's disheartening that the school is upholding people who had these values or partook in these certain activities, like owning slaves or treating slaves the way that they did. We are tired. public comment period uh, in, a, in a minute or two. But I, I appreciate the applause, but I'm going to ask you to probably hold applause or any other reaction, favorable or unfavorable. It, it, it will just, as President Christian said, some people may be chilled in uh, making their comments, and um, it will also uh, not add to inclusiveness. And so we want to have everybody say their mind and say it freely. Um, so if you can, please hold that back. Um, we're 
or the council are aware of the unanimous, uh, with one abstention of the faculty senate uh, recommendation to have the names removed. Likewise, student government's position, again, unanimous. So we're certainly aware of that. And now that we've had people speak to us uh, through a video, uh, we can see uh, what they have to say. But now we're going to have the opportunity from people who want to um, speak to the issue to speak. Um, I know there's a mic here. Mic over here. I'd ask you to keep it to about two or three, two minutes. I've got my timekeeper here. I know there's some coordination. Uh, we don't have a hook, so we'll just ask you to, we do have a hook. Um, no, uh, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have flashcards. And uh, so we'd ask you to respect uh, the timing of it. Um, we do have uh, two members of the Diversity and Inclusion um, Council who are really the chairs here, Tahina and Rennie. So they're here for any questions that people may have about that. There has been, as you know, a fairly in-depth study, an incredibly in-depth study of both the history and also the sentiments of uh, various constituencies regarding the names. And to me personally, it was somewhat revelatory because I learned things that I was not aware of, although I've been here um, in the community for 70 years. So it was very, very revealing and interesting. And so that's been shared with the council as well. And we put some time in going over it. And since it's such an important issue, having the public forum is going to give us more information so that we can digest the views, information, and uh, the sentiments. So thank you very much. And um, I know there's several people who would like to speak, so we have a mic over here. Um, I would just ask you to, to introduce yourself, and, um, and um, I'm going to say one thing to you first. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Uh, is there a button? I mean, I really don't need a mic, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're like me. Is it? It's on. No, it's, it's on. on. <coughs> Hello? That's good. Okay, good. Um, so, hi, everyone. My name is Lester Mayers. I'm a senior here. Um, I'm graduating this year, of course. I just wanted to read um, an email that I sent out to the Diversity Council yesterday. Um, I put so much thought into it and I try to keep it short and I try to get to the truth of how I was feeling and some of my um, fellow classmates were feeling. Um, I said, I am writing to express my thoughts about the importance of removing the name of former slave owner Hasbrook off our buildings on campus. It is indescribable feeling when you must call the name of your oppressor and your ancestor's former owner when you're going to eat. In fact, it is an unnecessary insult. I think SUNY New Paltz has an opportunity to manifest the words of the late great Maya Angelou, who said history, despite its wrenching pain, cannot be unlived, but if faced with courage, need not to be lived again. Allowing a name of a slave owner to be glorified on a campus where all are welcome is dangerous, and it is the brick that holds the door open for unnecessary ignorance to seep through. P.S. Most of the students are not aware of when these leadings are. If we can come up with another way or a creative way to uh, let us know, because we do have other things that we would like to talk about, and we just don't know that it is happening. But that's it. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you, Lester. Uh, uh, did I say that we should probably withhold our applause? <laughs> so please do something. Is there somebody else who'd like to make a comment? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Ortiz. Um, I'm currently a part of the Black Student Union and currently an hermana of Land of Hot Utah Sorority Latinas Poderosas Unidas Incorporated. Um, so I've actually been following the story for a while. Um, I'm, I'm a former RA and I was asked to host um, a conversation about the renaming of the buildings in Dalton Hall. Um, and it wasn't until that meeting that I was made aware of what the names of the actual buildings were. Um, I was a junior at the time. I'm currently a senior. Um, and so I was a little bit surprised because I, um, I identify as a Latina person of color, and um, to, I, I initially came to this school based off the sole fact 
that this school takes pride in diversity. Um, and that's really important to me because I'm a first college generation student. Um, and to see people like me on this campus, it was great. So when I found out about the, re the names of the building and what they meant, it was kind of like, you know, it was like, wow, like, how can this school have a mission like this when the buildings are named after, you know, people that have done things that have enslaved my people. Um, but I just feel like we should come together and come up with names that are um, both equally um, important to each other. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I know there, was, there must be another. Oh, here she goes. Come on. Hi, um, my name is Michelle Tejada, and I am the president of the Latin American Student Union and a sister of Corazones Unidos Siempre Chi Epsilon Sigma National Land Sorority Incorporated. Um, I think that we definitely need to change the name of Hasbrook. Um, one very important reason as to why is looking at what's currently going on on our campus. Just the other day, um, a white supremacist group, Identity Europa, came and put posters all over campus um, in attempt to recruit people. Um, and how can we say that that's not okay when we ourselves, as an institution, uphold that same ideology by commemorating somebody who, at one point, owned slaves? Um, so how can we tell other people, you know, you know, don't uphold that same ideology when we ourselves as an institution are doing the same thing. Um, so I think it's a very big issue that we need to set as an example um, for our students and to create that environment of inclusion because I don't think that that exists on campus and it makes me really sad because I, for the same reason as Alicia, came to this campus because I expected a um, institution that would accept me, right, as I am. Um, and looking at it now, I don't feel that way. So, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Imani Burnett, and I'm representing the Black Student Union here today as the president. Um, just a couple words. The fact that uh, Sununu Pulse is still holding on to a name of my ancestors, um, oppressor and slave, and excuse me, master. It, it just it it, show, it's a, it shows as a as a reflection um, of the active complacency that we are at as a country. Um, we we have uh, committees and programs and events that speak on diversity and inclusion, but as far as a mind state and us progressively moving forward as a people that is, that is not shown and it's continuously being um, pushed to the side, the real conversations about race and the real conversations about how our lives yet today still don't matter. Uh, so it'll be a justice to us all as human beings um, to change the names because it is not honoring the lives that exist here today and it continues to keep us oppressed in so many different ways. Um, and it's also very important for us to come in, um, thank you, it's very important for us to uh, consider the amount of people of color that we have here on this campus and honor their lives. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pink. I'm part of Student Association. I'm the Council of Organizations Chair. Um, I urge you guys to think about today that New Paltz is not the only place or university having this conversation. There have been schools like Georgetown and Yale University who have brought this up and it is continuing to talk about it. Um, I think New Paltz has the ability to transform itself here today and make history. Um, removing the names are the easy part. Um, 
I think to think about this, we should think about being on the right side of history. I think about companies not, like Nike who have backed Colin Kaepernick and have backed Serena Williams. In 20 to 30 years from now, Nike can say like, hey, we sat on the right side of history because change is constantly happening. Um, so I think about things like that and I urge you guys to think about it too. Thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Miles Figaro. I am serving as the vice president of the Black Student Union. And um, I was informed about this topic through the uh, essay event, where they actually showed a video in which uh, a gentleman, I, I don't remember his name, he mentioned that we shouldn't condemn Hasbro or his name because he was doing something that was part of the norm during his time as in owning slaves. And my objection to that is that we as a people, we, we've been able to grow from mistakes so of those who came before us. And even though it was the norm, we, we should know and we should learn from those mistakes that what he done, what he did as a person may have seemed as normal during his time. We should also recognize that it's not, a, it's not the right thing to do. You know, and now that we've become more of a diverse campus and more of a diverse community, um, we should take what we've learned and build upon those things. And so what I feel when I step in front of into Hasbro in order to eat, I'm not thinking of it as a place where those who came before me were oppressed. I think of it as a place where everyone, no matter your shape, your size, your color, your identity, we all come together as a community. And I feel as if if I'm going to be spending my time there, the name should represent what I represent as a student. Thank you very much. Hi, um, I'm KJ. I purposely came back just for this meeting. And in my opinion, it, it ha not haunts me, but it hurts me to know that people who did not represent me or did something towards my people are the names of these buildings. And this, the names of these buildings are supposed to be places where we sleep, eat, and come together as a community. And if those people were treating my community with such harshness or you know such oppression, how is it that myself and my peers could feel comfortable in these places and you know come together to be friends, to, be, to make a family when the people of the, of the names of the building didn't even represent that for myself. So I urge the council to like change the names. And then if you think about names, think of generic names or think of names that actually represent diversity and inclusion and are a good thing for the community and for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Jordan Almonte. I am a senior and I'm representing the students. <coughs> As a campus, we will, we will continue to collectively and actively work against such efforts that divide community and spew hate. Everybody here already expressed their feelings regarding the Har Harbor Complex. I'm here to use my two minutes effectively to, br to shed light on another major thing that's happening on campus. Everybody is well aware of the Nick incident, correct? And you always like presidents and, and I'm like many other students are tired of the administration using the first amendment as a resource to continue spewing the hate I just spoke about. So since you like presidents so much, I will bring out February 2018, SUNY Plattsburgh expelled students over Snapchat regarding lynching N-word. January 2018, Alabama State University suspends students from soccer team after post goes viral of star player using N-word and profanities. June 2018, Syracuse University expels 13 students after video surfaces of students shouting and shouting racial slurs. So when are we gonna be able to take action and, not, and stop using the First Amendment as a space go? So, thank you. Um, my name is James Weaver. I've came to the school like many others because I believed it was a very open-minded school that cared about their students, and I hope that's reflected in the decision that's been made. I've been following this issue since what I believe to be the beginning in the first uh, lecture center uh, meeting, and I've been listening to both sides the entire time, hearing 
out reasons uh, why it should or should not be changed. And from what I have found, the biggest reason people are against it is that it will um, erase history, sorry, uh, erase the history of what has occurred and we won't be learning from it. However, I believe that uh, is a false statement because we have our very own Hasbrook uh, Street where people can learn there, as well as the fact that uh, I've lived in Shango Hall, Shango Hall for uh, three years now, and there are plaques with the exact same names throughout, uh, uh, surrounding the entire building, inc including its own name of Shango. So we wouldn't, first off, we wouldn't even be taking the names off of all of the buildings on campus. And um, I believe we can still learn from those things and we don't have to uh, erase those uh, choices from uh, our campus. And I really hope that it is reflected in the decisions you've made today. Thank you very much. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, my name is Susan Stesson Cohn. I'm the historian for the town of New Pulse. And I just wanted to say, for many years, I've been hearing rumblings of students trying to maybe get some of this across, some of the issues. And I want to say how inspired I am to see that it's finally happened and that the staff, the students, the president are all really willing to think about this issue. Um, again, I'm just saying that I'm really inspired by all of this. And if anyone has any questions about local history, I'm certainly here to answer any of those. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nicole Cruz. I'm, a four, I'm in my fourth year here at SUNY New Paltz. Um, I came to this meeting because I've heard about it from my colleagues for a while, and I too have been interested in knowing what the change is going to be. Um, the first thing that I want to say is that I was asked about a couple weeks ago to be a part of a project with the school. Um, we're sending out new brochures to high schoolers and I'm going to be a profile in, in that brochure. Um, it's really hard for me as a woman of color to represent this school knowing that the school doesn't represent me. And another thing I want to say is I do want to represent the school because I want other women of color from lower class families to know that they belong here. So there's a Prob like th there's a two-side problem there for me. Um, and I don't want to lie about what's going on on this campus. When I represent this school, I want to be as honest as possible. So I urge this institution to think about change. I know that change isn't easy. Thank you. Change is really hard, but it's worth it every single time. Um, we have to think about the student body. Um, without the students, there really wouldn't be an institution. And so we have to consider what is best in this um, situation that we have today. Um, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, my name is Brian Bonita. I'm the co-treasurer of BSU. Um, I just have a quick comment about the person who said, um, who had an excuse to say that, uh, that uh, the reason as to why we shouldn't change these names is because um, it feels as though they're erasing history. I feel like when you guys say that, it's kind of counterproductive. You guys really necessarily preach it to the choir because in these scenarios, the people that, if we take these names away, we're taking the names away of people who already erased history to, towards other students of color <laughs> on this campus. For example, me, who I am mine, which has Native American blood in me. For example, the president who's African, who has African blood in her. So it's like this kind, this kind of excuse to say that we can't take this name away due to the fact of um, it erasing history, to me, feels like it's kind of crocodile tears because it's like it's already happened. And textbooks these days are already doing the same thing, explaining to slaves that they are indentured servants, which is not necessarily the right term or definition to call us, or saying that Native Americans gave land, which is not necessarily the right term to say, or to say, for example, that um, Columbus found um, America. These are all terms that have been changed by the same people of power that are named after these Hasbro quads. So it's like to me, to say something like that, to say that we can't take their names away because in a sense, we're taking away history is kind of counterproductive in my opinion. So it's just like, I just have a comment on that. That's all I really have to say. So it was just my opinion on that. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Brianna. I'm a sophomore here and I'm involved in many um, clubs that represent change. 
um, for campus and for the world. Um, in times like this, I think it's absolutely like demeaning and sickening that we have names like this um, for our campus um, when there are still things going on um, that are just happening to people of color, um, obviously school sh um, shootings, uh, police brutality. I think that as a campus, we have to be better and we have to represent everyone. Um, and it's just absolutely disgusting that it's even a topic here. Um, just the fact that there are people who, um, who attend this college and like they don't even know that Hasbrook is a slave owner's name. I didn't know until recently. Um, I think it's just something that really needs to be changed and it shouldn't even be a discussion. It should just be changed. Thank you. Hello, my name is Katie Hennessy, and over the summer I had a wonderful opportunity to be an orientation leader, um, where I had the opportunity to work with 75 students of all different races, backgrounds, and um, circumstances. And one thing that we stressed over the summer is that every single student here at SUNY New Paltz has the chance to become anything that they would like to be. That if you got here, you worked very hard, you obviously have the potential to become something great, and that we are giving you the opportunity to do that with what you will. I think that as everyone here has um, expressed so far, that the names of the buildings on our campus are making students feel that they cannot reach their full potential. It is making them uncomfortable and it's making them feel that they are not welcome. Over the summer I saw the exact opposite of that and I hope that we can change the names of these buildings to reflect what these students deserve. Because from working with them, every single one of them has the potential to become something wonderful if we give them the opportunity to grow comfortably. Thank you. Good uh, afternoon, my name is Jordan Hunt, and um, I'm a senior here at SUNY New Post. This is my final year here. And I just wanted to talk about, um, I've been on a lot of different organizations, and some of the organizations I uh, give tours. And this is a very popular building, and I tell this to the students is that part of this campus is just going to some of these buildings, and there's history, and you should always look into your history. <laughs> and I just want to talk about that over time, SUNY New Paltz itself has changed. Different demographics have come to the school. And I think it's very important that we take time to consider what we want New Paltz to represent. Um, it was earlier mentioned that New Paltz is a place that students can come here and they should feel safe. They should feel that they can become who they may want to be. But um, just the other day in the news, um, very unfortunately, someone had dealt with uh, police brutality here at New Paltz. Um, I can look at the numbers on different students and demographics that come into the school. And um, some students, like the ratio of, for example, black men at this school versus black women at this school versus um, Latinx women at this school, and et cetera. There are different demographics that come to the school and they, they view this school differently. And I think it's very important that meetings like these, we bring up the opinions and the facts on how certain students come to this school and feel. And something that may seem like erasing history, we might want to ask, what history are we erasing? Because we have members of, say, like the Hasbrook 8 who had fought for discrimination that happened on this campus. And to this day, you know, that was years ago, but to this day, we still have situations like that. So it's very important. I just wanted to comment on not falling to decadence and, and, and sticking to change and remembering that when each of us was young, we wanted to make change. It was a long, a uh, strenuous process, but very much worth it. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Anthony Dandridge. I'm a new faculty member in the Black Studies Department. Uh, I'm proud to call myself, this is my first semester here at uh, SUNY New Paul. And because, uh, in part because of uh, everybody showing up here and everything that everybody said thus far, I'm proud to call myself a member of the SUNY New Paul community. So thank y'all very much. 
Um, Sunni Nupal is at a crossroads in its existence, not unlike that we find in other universities. But it's important for us to understand that when we talk about the university, when we talk about this particular college, there is no particular uh, unique distinction or, uh, between the college and the broader community. To that extent, I'm saying that what is going on at SUNY New Pause right now is not only occurring in other colleges as it relates to engaging ideas with respect to how we should change our identity and how those identities are related to the ways in which we name our buildings. But then also, we find this in other aspects outside of the universe. One minute, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got you, I got you. Um, everybody said a lot of different things, so I don't want to hark on that, but what I want to say is, names matter. If names didn't matter, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> names are a celebration of identities which are a reflection of our values and a reflection of our predispositions, attitudes, and preferences. Martin Luther King said, the, arc, the long arc of the universe bends towards justice. Where are we gonna stand in this particular moment? It's less about erasing history and more about understanding what the university is objectives are always centered towards. And it's always about education, and education is always in pursuit of the truth and justice. And as it relates to that, and my time is up, with respect to this issue of truth, we understand that the university is centered around, a, is a corrective <coughs> institution within our nation as a whole. So it's less about us erasing a history and more about us being on the correct side of history. Thank you very much. Hello. All right. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Jeffrey Tillman. Uh, I don't, this, uh, Going back to when Jordan was talking about giving tours, I actually give tours like through the admissions department here on here on campus. Like, like I just want to know, like not I don't want to, but I just want to say, like I want to like say, like how would it feel like as a college council, like if like I was saying things like the fact that these buildings were even named after slave owners on tours because we are allowed to talk about uh, personal experiences. Like this would count as a personal experience. Like what if like. Like, like naming, like talking about has record. What if I somehow, like, what if I were to talk about like this meeting and like, I'm not saying this is going south, but like, let's say if it were to go south and like, you end up deciding on not, you end up deciding on not to change the names. Like, I could honestly go on tour and talk about that, and that would definitely not help the the school at all. Like, but also it's also like, I bring that up because I want to bring up the point of how how real plans kind of got changed. Like part of it was uh, due to the fact that people were asking um, people that not even not even current students but prospective students, and then putting that input uh, towards that decision. Like, what if we kind of did the same thing? Like, like how like how would it happen if we were like talking like asking prospective students like how would you feel the fact that uh, like we have six, six, maybe even more, I'm not even sure, but those six buildings specifically that are named after slave owners, like how would they feel about that and how would they view New Post after hearing that question? That's all I really want to say. I just want to like, think about, like even if you don't do it just because it's right, at least think of the image, please. Thank you. Thank you all for thank you all for having this this forum. My name is Hector Rodriguez. I'm the Democratic leader of the Ulster County Legislature, and I represent the village and town of New Paltz. I think you've heard er, by earlier speakers names have power, and that we are not in any risk of losing the Hasbrook name in this community. You can go a bit south of here, and there's a big park called Hasbrook. There are streets named Hasbrook, and there are buildings named Hasbrook. But I want to actually just sort of you, you've heard the pain, and the frustration. I, I want to speak on the other side of this, in which you also have an opportunity now. Because with each generation, you have different values that we represent. And clearly, these were the values of the past. We, we named things after previous uh, descendants. 
but there are now, their descendants now. There, there are folks living here now. There are people who impact this community now. And I think that what you really have, it's not about taking the way the name Hasbrook, because we have plenty of Hasbrook buildings and names, but it's more about you have an opportunity now to be able to give a new name to this building that better repre represents the values of New Paltz. So I want you to be thinking of that as well when you vote, and please vote to change the name. Thank you. Oh yeah, okay. So I, got a, I got tongue by the president. There are a number of names, I think there are actually six names of Huguenots <laughs> that are involved in the, in the complex, although Hasbrook is the iconic <coughs> name because of the dining hall. Just a matter of information. Thank you. Okay, hello, my name is Jade, and um, after listening to students and like hearing from my friends and other people that I'm involved in, the first thing that came to my mind was progression. And progression is what New Paltz is known for. But for some reason, when we're talking about race, it kind of goes under the belt. This has a real issue to do with how students of color feel. And it seems that when it comes to, especially for Hasbro Quad, um, the owners were slave owners. And just to, like, to say it, and to have to like go there, to have to eat, to have to have that kind of like in your head. Even all the other buildings that are around there that are named after slave owners, it kind of belittles the, the progression that New Paltz is known for. New Paltz is known for teaching their students to progress and have new ways of thinking and going with the times. We are no longer in the time where slave, slave owning is okay. So that means that things need to change. Policies change all the time. So, okay. So um, I think it's important to keep that in mind when we're thinking of changing the name. That progression is, is what New Paltz is known for. All my professors told me that New Paltz is known for progression when I was coming here. That's why I chose here to move forward. But if we are thinking going backwards, it's, it's contradictory to what New Paltz is known for. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Caitlin Warbrick. Um, I live in the Rivera House LLC. Um, when I look around the faces at this council table, I see a lot of faces that look like mine. And I think it's important for us to remember that we can't ignore the outcry from the students of color on campus calling for us to change these names. Silence is violence. To expect us to accept that we keep the name of slave, overs, slave owners on this campus is unreasonable. We cannot celebrate the legacy of slave owners by highlighting their names on this campus. It is a privilege not to be bothered by this name and a privilege that not everyone on this campus shares in. Thank you. Thank you. You're not going to get graded on what you say. So, um, if you have something to say you know, and been thinking about it, we really welcome your expression of what your feelings are. And uh, don't, don't be reluctant. We'll Thank you, time. So, thank you. Good afternoon. Or Can you guys hear me without the mic? Just put up just 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 me. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Igor. I'm currently a junior here. Um, Based on my personal experience here, I've witnessed from my freshman year that there's a very inclusive campus in respect to like uh, the programs that are carried out, the different activities that happen every Thursday. We have an entire market uh, for people to come and showcase their different things. However, I feel like when it comes to like this specific topic, it's been like swept under the rug. <coughs> um, moving, moving on forward in the history of this college, uh, there's an agenda of diversity that exists. That agenda uh, is something that the naming of these buildings is holding back. Uh, a lot of these students that came up earlier we were talking about moving forward. Uh, I believe that this is just one step. One step. This is not the clinching decision, I would say, in bringing diversity forth to this campus, but it is definitely just one crucial step that I can definitely see unfolding into something else. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Hello. My name is Chris Lee Bloomfield. I'm a black woman. My ancestors were black women that flipped, hop, skipped over boundaries that allowed me to reach where I am today. So why is that the ones that held the chains to hold me back from what I can truly gain have caught up with me years after such a big change has been made? Why is it that their past credentials are not mentioned? We're erasing history, but what about their true intentions? If names don't matter, how do we be identified? If names don't matter, why were my ancestors stripped of their real, true identities? I just want to say that we are here, and we are students that are involved, and we want to know what's happening. And I feel like the name should be changed, because how are we really being represented as students on this campus of color? If so many years things have changed, why shouldn't the campus be as progressive as we are today? Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Rodriguez. I'm a little sick, but I had to come in because it's something that, um, I don't know, like I remember coming to New Parts and always seeing New Parts as a bubble and like a home away from home. And when I think about it, sometimes, sometimes a bubble needs to be burst to see and uncover the kind of like the real side of the thing, of things that are happening. And I feel like we try to cover and hinder things that are currently happening just because we don't want to confront it because a lot of us feel uncomfortable think, um, talking about it. And just like a bubble, like I said, a bubble sometimes needs to be burst so it could, you know, so you, we could really see what's really happening. You know, yeah, we, you know, we all express how we felt and my question is like, what's gonna happen next? Because sometimes we do express ourselves and it's kind of like, you know, they express themselves and that's it. You know, we gave them the chance to do that. Now, what, what changes will happen? You know, there's a lot of things happening in Newport and in other schools that is very scary um, to just think about and just thinking of the next generation and them seeing this and think it's normal to have these type of names that obviously makes a lot of us feel extremely uncomfortable. And me being a senior and feeling like this bubble no longer feels safe, it's kind of, it makes me real, really sad. And aside from sad, I'm really disgusted inside, like extremely. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Naomi Hurts. I'm a freshman here. And so I think not only is this about names, it makes you think of the Confederate flags in the South and all the stuff about taking them down. And that almost makes me think of Germany, of Nazi Germany. The flag there, the Nazi flag, is illegal. Any semblance of Nazi propaganda or anything like that is highly illegal. Because Germany is ashamed. They're ashamed for what they did. But it seems like America isn't. Because you still see Confederate flags flying. I think I've seen some in New York. New, New York. We were part of the Union. Why are there Confederate flags in New York? So, and you don't see anything in Germany named after high-ranking Nazi officials, or probably any Nazis for that matter. I have to be honest, I'm not entirely sure on that. But there shouldn't, be, there shouldn't be things named after people who did horrible things. It shows we're not ashamed, and we should be ashamed. I'm Ron Lua. I came to this campus in 1970. I'm probably going to be a little bit more than two minutes. So if you can just bear with me, please. I came here in 1970. And when I came here in 1970, I was maybe one of 300 black students 
And during the time that I was here, by the time I left in 1974, I've been president of the student body for two years. For two years. I served on the Faculty Student Association as its vice chairman. I served as the president of the Black Student Union also. In short, I've done a lot of things on this campus, which is why I serve on this board now, on this council now. Not only do I serve on the council, I also serve on the foundation. And I raise money for the foundation for the engineering school. I give you that by way of background. Now, I can say that my program has been government. <clears throat> I've worked for two governors, a senator, and a mayor of the city of New York. I've been the director of the, of, of the Crisis Prevention Unit, which was formed by the state, which was, before, which was created by Governor Cuomo. Now, I'm giving you all this as a way of background. I also was for the General Services Administration, the director of the African Burial Ground Project. So this, pro so, so this whole issue is very important to me and dear to me. Now, a gentleman here talked about how he lives in Shango, and he's, he's proud of that. What a lot of you probably don't know is in 1972, the Board of Regents of the state of New York determined that black dorms was segregation, and that they wanted us to shut down Shango. I was part of the student leaders who were from Vassar, from Bard, New Paltz, Maris, who met with Kenneth Clark, and we picked Kenneth Clark because we thought that Kenneth Clark was, would be sympathetic to what we were trying to say. In short, that it was a cultural institution and that on a campus you need diversity and a black dorm and any other institution that has an ethnic identity serves to increase the inclusion on that campus, not diminish it. Problem was, Kenneth Clark was the instigator for wanting the black dorms gone. Now, I will share with you why. He, he told us in, in this meeting. He tried to give us all the reasons why, because he, he, he was a psychologist, but it boiled down to a very simple thing. One of his interns went to Webling, uh, Webling uh, Combus, uh, College out in Ohio, and he was preaching integration to the black students on that campus, and unfortunately the black students on that campus weren't buying it, so they took him to the woodshed. When he took him to the woodshed, he ended up in the hospital for three, year, I mean, for, for three months. And that caused Kenneth Clark to determine that that should not happen in the state of New York. But the students who stood up to him, now when we went to him, we didn't go to him by ourselves. We had other elected officials who went there with us. They supported us in what we were saying. In short, that diversity doesn't mean that you have to exclude anybody, that things can happen. Now, I'm slightly disappointed by some of the things which I've heard today, and, and I'll, I'll t tell you why. Because I believe in redemption, and I also believe in a teachable moment. When I hear people talk about sleeping in a dorm with a name, and talking about the progression, how progressive New Paltz is, New Paltz has been around for close to 50, 75 years, and it has progression with those names of those buildings. And more importantly, no one talked about the fact that anybody from the Hasbro family helped Sojourner Truth get her child back in a legal court pro bono. No one talks about that, and I want to know why. Because if you're going to talk about slavery, let's talk about what else they did to correct their slavery, to do something on the opposite side. Now, there's more which I could say, but I don't want to take up too, too much time. The last time I spoke on this campus, as a, as, as a president of the student body, the faculty, the, the faculty passed a, a resolution saying that students shouldn't speak at any more commencements. And they passed it because I accused the faculty at that time of playing, of, of using the, the education of the students here as a political football. I don't want you to make that same mistake. Sleeping in a dorm doesn't really have that much of an impact on you because you are bigger than what that dorm is. You are bigger than what that name is. Also, when people talk about buying food in Hasbro, 
I don't see anybody saying that they don't want to use George Washington, who was a bigger slave owner than the Hasbrooks, about paying for their food. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Uh, 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 no, no repetitive. I, I Excuse know, me. Ron, hold off for one second because you're asking no, no, us to no, make. No, I run the hold, show. I understand, you but you're asking us to make second. a moral yeah. appeal to a place that doesn't have a moral conscience at all, and that's ridiculous. You just said up here, and like, Excuse you're a black me. man. No, 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 no. Excuse me. No, 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 no. Excuse me. Excuse me. You're a black Excuse man. Me. You just set up here and tear down everything that we just said. You'll have a time no, 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 no. We're, we're not doing that, okay? What we're doing is you're asking us to make a moral appeal to a place that does not have a moral conscience at all. And you all need to ask yourself that question. Come on. Well, you said you could talk. Well, no, you no. Could talk. no just, no, excuse, excuse me. I swear the officer put her hands on. Okay, excuse right. me. That's all. That's all. Hey, hey. Excuse notice. me. Excuse me. I'm running the show. Bye now. Okay. I know you have strong feelings. But, and if somebody wants to respond and have a second say, I would just say people who are getting the first opportunity to speak should. I know there, it, 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 it brings up emotions, and that I'm not saying that's inappropriate. It's understandable and appropriate. But uh, just in turn, come back again. You're more than welcome to readdress the comments of Rod or anybody else. But Eleanor wanted to speak, and she hasn't had an opportunity now and I welcome your comments. I would like to say a few words about the families in Newport who have been here since the 17th century, who are living here now, whose names are Lefebvre, Hasbro, Chris Bell, Deo. Should they be ashamed of their families? Yes. They're yes. no yes. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. They oh. Should, Would you be? If yes. you were one of them? Excuse me, Eleanor, so we'll have an opportunity to discuss this as a council. Well, I'm, let me I'm asking you, you please thing. to not invite debate now. Okay? That, I, this is a public forum for people in the public to, to speak. You understand? <laughs> and so I would ask you, please do not invite I have a debate. Story. Yeah, I know, but you're inviting content. You know, response that's inappropriate. When uh, my husband and I came 48 years ago, we were very poor, but we had enough money to start building a house because my husband's a carpenter. But we didn't have enough money to buy wood at that time. And Mr. Lefebvre, who owned the lumber yard, came to our house and said, Andre, aren't you buying lumber? He said, I have no money. He said, I'll let you have the lumber until you can pay me. And that Christmas, when we were alone at a, an, um, an apartment that we rented, there was a knock on the door Christmas Eve, and there was Miss Lefebvre with a large platter of cookies. I mean, this was something he didn't have to do at all. Great. Thank you very much. And I appreciate that. Now, and that's just the kind of yeah, people okay. They are. okay, just just so we can, you know, maybe focus a little bit more. Um, maybe I, you know, I, I'm, information is really good and helpful, but it was meant to be an opportunity for the public rather than a council because we'll discuss the issues. And just by way of clarity, to be informed, the names are actually of the actual uh, original settlers, not the family names. There's, and there's a divergence of that. Uh, Ron has made a very appropriate comment, as says Eleanor, that many of the families um, over time became uh, very, very supportive of one another and of uh, diversity as well, and as human rights, and fought in the Civil War, uh, of course, on behalf of the Union. So it's, what, my point is, it's not such a simple subject. If it was simple, we'd just make a decision like that, okay? It's not a simple subject. It's complex. We're in a complex country. We get a lot of strength from the complexity. It weaves itself together. Sometimes, unfortunately or fortunately, we have to be patient. Patient. I, I'm older. When I was your age, I was not patient. But I will tell you, and this is, you have to be a matter of faith, but patience often gets rewarded. And that persistence always gets rewarded. So I understand the comments, the persistence of them from where they come from, and, it's, and they are taken to the heart by members here at the council. I, I want you to know that. And I was going to warn people, which I was supposed to do, to not be repetitive. 
I don't think people were being particularly repetitive. I think they all spoke to what was heartfelt by them and how they are affected by the, by the names. And it's understood in the context of today, not in the context of 1940 or 70, in the context of today. And so I've welcomed all the public comments. I see a few repeaters here ready to go. And I would just ask you, you can, you're welcome to make additional comments, but I would ask you to not be repetitive. And I'm going to give about another 10, 15 minutes to this. So thank you very much. Hello, College Council. My name is Nazareth Garrido McNair. I'm the Senate Chair of the Student Association, and I'd just like to thank all my peers for coming out today in support of this important topic. Um, Mr. Busk, I just have one question for you. Um, under the agenda, I recognize that this is the part for the public forum. I'm not understanding why you would allow two council members to speak during the public forums portion of the meeting. Okay, They're, they asked to do so, and, and it was my prerogative, and I took advantage of that. I didn't know what they were going to say, but I can't say per se that they're not members of the public as well. Uh, Eleanor lives in, in um, New Paltz. She's a member of the public as well. She serves more than one thing. Ron is a distinguished alumnus, and likewise, so I thought they wanted to add comments they could. And I hope it was helpful in some manner, degree, to the understanding of the issue. So yes. that, that's my answer to your question. And now you may speak. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate your clarification in that matter. Um, however, I am aware that I only have two minutes. My peers only have two minutes. Community members only have two minutes. You have decades of time to speak on matters. And I do not appreciate as a student here and as a student leader here that you would allow two members of the College Council who can speak freely as they will when we cannot. Thank you. Thank you. I usually get booed, not applause, and that's the reason that I'm telling you to hold down the applause. Oh. I'm shorter than this microphone. Hi, I'm Jessica Pavone. I'm assistant professor of women's gender and sexuality studies here. This is my fifth year teaching. Um, I want to say that there's nothing that I could say that the students have already, haven't already said, and I'm so proud of you, all of you. Um, the thing that I want to bring up um, that hasn't yet been brought up is, yes, this issue, the, and I should also say for transparency, I was on the Diversity and Inclusion co uh, Council last year, um, and I'm also the founder of the Women of Color Network for faculty and staff here, and so that's the, um, the place from which I speak right now. When we talk about the renaming of the Hasbrook uh, complex buildings, I also want us to think about the effects that it has on the faculty and staff, right? So students, they live here, you have to go to class, you have to you know, deal with that. Faculty and staff are part of the institution for much longer. We are talking to these students who are right experiencing the effects, who are feeling being at a predominantly white institution that has to have multiple forums about something that actually should be pretty simple. It, and to, to um, echo what one of the other students said, if you don't choose to change the names because it's right, um, or because like it looks good, change it, take the opportunity to make the symbolic gesture. We're a predominantly white institution, but we're going to make this gesture for our students. Imagine what, faculty, staff, and students who are people of color, how we're going to feel if the names don't get changed. Who belongs here? How is the rhetoric of diversity and inclusion actually used to make whiteness right, more centered, more included, when progress is being made in terms of racial inequity on campus? I would really ask us to think about that. right? How are we using the terms that uh, uh, revolutionary freedom fighters have established for us in terms of diversity and inclusion against those very communities. Thank you. Thank you. Um, once again, my name is Miles Figaro. Um, I understand that we have a two minute time limit, so I'll try to make sure I address every point I wanted to. Um, in terms of uh, Mr. Lowe's comments earlier <laughs> about us being much bigger than the, the dorms we sleep in or the eateries that we do um, eat our food in. I, I do agree with that sentiment. I do agree that us as uh, colored people or marginalized people, we are bigger than that because most of us here, we come from households, where, with single family households where we have to thrive and do much better, only, only to be recognized and only to make it to these institutions where a lot of our ancestors were shackled up and being slaves. So me personally being here it just shows a testament of not only me as a person, but my family, and how hard we've tried to, only, how, how hard we tried to only to get here. So, and to that point, 
And when you argue that we don't argue about George Washington, how we use his dollar bills to pay for these things, I feel as if we have to start somewhere. And we have to start on our campus because most of us, we're learning to be leaders. We're learning to step up for ourselves and take matters into our own hands about issues that do affect us. So Hasbrook being step one, and then eventually we'll get on to those bigger things. We have to start somewhere. And um, uh, uh, to go on to the other comment about the, the Hasbrook family, um, I'm not gonna say that their family is completely bad. I, don't, I personally don't know their family. I, I doubt that anyone in this room does. Yeah. Their family could go on to be lawyers and doctors, be uplifting people. But there's something that we must know is that their family did own slaves and that's negative. They don't go on their resumes or they don't talk about their family, say, oh, I went, to, I went to this school, I went to that school. Oh, my grandfather, oh, he owned slaves. That's something that they leave out on purpose because such negative connotation that goes along with it. So I feel as if us as a community, we need to change that. I want to change that negative history that New Pulse shows and that New Pulse constantly has, you know? And if it's socially important about erasing history, that's what we're here for now, for what Hasbro's family to do now, like to, in order to reinvent themselves and reinvent that name. Because if Hasbro's name was such important, it's up to his grandkids, and those that come after him, to show that there's something more than just being a slave owner's family. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, again, my name is James Weaver. Um, to start with, uh, comments with the, do the dollar bill again. We understand that, yes, that is an issue as well, but we're in, at a New Paltz council meeting, not somewhere that that can be addressed and fixed here. That's not what we're here to discuss, and that's not something we can have a change in at this meeting. We are discussing what we can change here at New Paltz. So, to begin with, we understand, yes, the descendants are different people and they can be very lovely people and they pro most certainly are, but these buildings weren't named for the descendants. They were named after the ancestors, otherwise it, the, the ancestors preceded the descendants. It's obviously named after them. They are two different uh, groups of people. I also want to bring to attention that, yes, uh, these are the names and they can be changed to things that don't have to necessarily do with people. Uh, for example, Shango, I know for a fact is uh, named after, derived from a god of thunder somewhere in Africa. I unfortunately forget which area. Or and yes, and it, it means power, something that we can all get behind. There, there are many, we can take um, words from all different languages and cultures for family, friendship, knowledge, all these different things that mean so much more and are so much more important to our students and use those names instead. And I also want to bring attention to the actual names of the other buildings because we seem to be only focusing on Hasbrook. There is also Deo, Dubois, Lefevre, Chris Bell, and Bevier houses that all are important to be changed as well and need to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to respond to uh, Mr. Law's comments. Um, <laughs> Just to go back to the issue of slavery in general, um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but um, it was the owning of other human beings, um, the torturing and rape of those human beings. And that's not something, you know, of course, yes, their descendants might have made up for that and helps to join our truth, right? And that's a great thing. But at the end of the day, it was named after those people and that's not something that anybody should stand for. That is literally owning another human being as if they're an animal. Um, and I don't find that okay. Um, and also the comment about them being the original settlers, um, that's also not true. There were indigenous people here before that that were actually, um, you know, those people committed mass genocide against them and took the land rather than were the original settlers. Um, so I think that it's also important in the same way of knowing the history behind Hasbrook um, and their descendants, um, knowing the history about the people, the actual people that um, this complex is named after um, and the history behind that. And that is the history there. Um, and in terms of um, right sleeping in the rooms, um, I do think that it is an issue um, because at the end of the day, it makes a statement. Um, and as, I'm not sure, I forget what your name is, but names do matter. Um, oh, Anthony Dan. Anthony Dan, <laughs> right? Names do matter. Um, I, right, 
lived in Boughton Hall my freshman year. Um, and although Boughton Hall wasn't named after um, a slave owner, there were comments written in the very hall that I was living in. Um, a lot of racial slurs telling Latinos to go home, Muslims go home, F the N word, right? Um, and at the end of the day, um, as I said earlier, when we, just, I'm almost done, um, when we uphold those values and allow our campus to commemorate those people who at once, at one point oppressed us people of color, we set a standard for our community. And quite frankly, it's not spoken about often, but racism is very much alive. And a, as a person who grew up in a community that, I grew up around a lot of racism, quite frankly. I've had the word spick written on my property. Okay. I've had KK. I'm sorry to hear that, but you're way over your time. But you like the okay, I'm sorry to hear that. That's not the forum. You know, yes, but I'm, have not I'm trying to. Excuse me. Other people haven't had the opportunity to speak. We are time limited, and, and you already had one opportunity. It's not to be voted on. I'm sorry. The ground rules are the ground rules. It's respect. Respect your other students who want to speak. Okay, of course, yes. I'm just asking if I could finish my sentence. You can. The reason that I mentioned that is because of how important it is to make students here on this campus feel comfortable. As somebody who has felt uncomfortable my whole life, coming here, I want to feel comfortable, right? And that's very important. And it's important to talk about because that stuff is happening here on this campus too and we're letting it happen. The point is well made. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. The other people are, want the opportunity to speak and should be the people. As we know, yeah. As we know, names aren't just names. Names are titles, and titles tell stories. And the story of Hasbrook is one that took away stories of my own in the past. So, why is it that in places, say in Germany, the Nazi regime, any anyone associated with that, their name isn't there, but here, even though at the time what the Nazi regime did was considered normal. Why is it that you wouldn't see any name of any extreme jihadist terrorist because they terrorized people in this country? And that's exactly what the name of Hasbrook did to people in this country back in the time, to my people. Why is it that the black community, the minority community is the anomaly where our stories can't be heard but your stories can, where in a textbook, you won't see Malcolm X, but you will see <clears throat> slave owners' names and their stories and what happened, what they did. But prominent black leaders, you won't see their stories anywhere in, in, in any American textbook, and it won't go in depth. Thank you. Hello, my name is Otto Zeman. I'm a sophomore and I came to this campus because I had been told it was really inclusive and diverse and way more honestly than I personally think it is. Uh, but it is with the students, just not as much with the administration. Um, when Identity Europa, th the Identity Europa thing happened, the students had a protest ready in like two days, uh, specifically the International Socialists Organization. And we got like an email um, last year there was harmful chalk graffiti, I believe it was rape apologist chalk graffiti, uh, that went up, but there was also, like, a lot of pro-marginalized people chalk that went up. I think the feminism club did something, but we got an email, and it was like, you can't do any chalk graffiti ever again. Um, and that's not freaking cool. Um, we get, when a divisive in uh, issue comes up, we get emails denouncing hatred and the hurt of marginalized people, or not denouncing the hurt, but the further hurting of them. But there's no, things don't actually extend beyond those emails. Like, I don't know if I can actually think of an example where it did. Um, and I urge you all to actually act upon that supposed support of marginalized people. And also to stop tone policing people. Nobody here should be getting yelled at for continuing to speak their mind.
Everybody's entitled to an opinion. So next, next one, please. Yeah. I have a lot to say, but I'm going to reserve that for when we discuss it among the council. And you're all welcome to listen to what I have to say. And we're here to listen to you. And there's a number of people, and we'd like to share the time and be fair to everybody. That's my intention. It's not to limit somebody, but to give opportunity to others. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I wanted to read a quote. Um, I'm taking American literature now with Professor Wyman. Um, and this is by Phyllis Wheatley. And can I then but pray others may never feel tyrannic sway? I learned about Phyllis Wheatley for the first time this year. I've been here for four years. I'm an English student. I've been in education all my life, and I have never heard of Phyllis Wheatley before. But for some reason, like I know of all these other people, um, she's amazing. And I urge everyone here to look into her if you don't know who she is. Um, I think that quote really kind of encapsulates what our, like as a person of color, as a group of people of color, we've felt for years, for centuries. We have felt tyrannic sway for way longer than we ever should. Um, I also want to say that for the comments that was earlier about sleeping in a dorm, we should never tell other people how they should feel, how their psychology should feel, or whatever. If sleeping in a dorm makes someone uncomfortable and that's what they're focusing on, then let them focus on that. I have no power right now to change the dollar bill. <coughs> Money is way bigger than the dorms on this campus. Um, I mean, there's money, we're money. Like, students just fund this school. And if we want the names to change, then I urge you guys to change it. Because I promise you that the power that we have as students, we will do something about the students that are coming into the school. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Um, my name is Jessica Welsh. I'm a faculty member here in the Communication Disorders Department. I work extensively with prospective um, first year and transfer students in our department. And the question that I get most frequently from um, incoming or prospective students and more, more often their parents is, why New Paltz? Why should, why should we come to New Paltz? And the first thing I always go to is because you get a chance to be part of a community. You can be part of the community in our department. You can be part of the community in our campus. You can be part of the community in the town. Um, and it seems like right now we're at a point where we have a chance to strengthen that community or to rend that community. And um, it seems like this is a chance to live our commitment to our stated institutional values that reflect and celebrate diversity within our community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pink again. Um, I would first like to say, um, Ronald Law, I respect you getting up and saying something in a room full of people that you know don't agree with you. Um, I respect that. Um, I do say, though, I call to who you are as a person. You fought to represent black students here in New Paltz. I believe Miles says he has to get up every day and work. We don't have to work twice as hard. We have to work four times as hard. I am a black woman in America who is also part of the LGBT community. I wake up every day oppressed. I could let that be the defining factor in my life, but I will not. We are here today to say these names need to be changed. And I, we talked about the history, and I understand that it's more than one person. It's Hasbrook, Chris Bell, Dale, Lefevre, Bevier, and Dubois. Dubois. Thank you. This land was stolen from the Nalape people. When the 12 men of New Paltz, the Patanees, the Devine, decided to take New Paltz land, they signed a lease. Leases don't last forever, but yet we're here today in land that they had stolen from people. The Nalape is now reside in the Midwest. They lived here along with the Esopus people. I get the part that you can say that Sunni New Paltz is using this as a political agenda. But why not? Why not let us, why not you guys be on the right side of history and saying from years from now, when people look back, they're gonna see, wow, SUNY New Paltz, they listened to their students. They made a change and they did what was right. And I urge you guys to think about <coughs> what is right in this moment, in this time, in the 21st century, in 2018. Thank you. Hi, 
with KJ again, and I just, I didn't give any background information on myself. So as I said earlier, I came here just for this meeting. I have family things going on right now that I should be home for, but instead I came for this meeting because this topic is important to me. And I want to go back to my first original comment when I said I don't feel comfortable sleeping. I don't want to be in a community in places that have names that don't represent me. I live in Capon right now. Last year I used to live in a sofas and I chose to live in a sofas because I didn't want to live in buildings that did not represent me. As Pink said, a sofas and, and Lenape were from the original people here. I felt comfortable living there. I wanted to live there. I felt close with my peers. I don't live in Lefevre, I don't live in Crespel or any of the other buildings in Hasbro Quad because they don't represent me. So why, as a black woman, as a Latino, as a Latina woman, why should I be on this campus always letting out diversity and inclusion when the buildings of the names that represent me are not doing that? I shouldn't have to do that. This campus has black students in it. So why is, why is the campus not representing its black students? If you want a name on the building that represents someone, have it represent substance, represent something that's better, not something that has a negative name attached to it. I understand everybody's you know, feelings. I have my own personal feelings. But this is, this is way bigger than just <coughs> personal what am I trying to, I don't even know what I'm trying to say at this point. It's, it's, exactly. It's more than just emotions. It's more than just any of that. So don't make this into a, well, it's not just about sleeping there. Because if I don't feel, if I don't feel comfortable sleeping there, then why, why should I even be at this institution? I'm a transfer student. I transferred here. I didn't have to come here. I could have went everywhere else. And the reason why I came here was because of diversity and inclusion. My last campus didn't have this much diversity and inclusion. We had less black students there, but I felt more, more proud to be black there than I do here. Hello all. Again, my name is Imani Burnett, and I'm here representing the Black Student Union as the president. Uh, just two comments on various things that were said um, by my peers and by Mr. Law. It was just disappointing to hear um, how normalized and how, how regular slavery is to, to people who, to, to, even to people who even look like me, um, such as yourself, Mr. Law. Um, the fact that you brought up the point that Sojourner Truth was helped um, her children was helped, you know, out of whatever they were going through. If if Shajana Truth was here to speak in the physical for herself today, I'm pretty sure she would be, she would say that she wouldn't even have to she wouldn't even want to have to go through that to go through the measures of having her children um, be helped by one of the families that represent the name of one of the buildings here. But my point is, it's important for us to consider not only to change the names because they represent uh, the brutal treatment of black bodies and black souls on this campus and way before we were even here. Um, but just to consider that not only the names of these buildings threaten our, threaten our lives and our existence here and our safety, but the continuous um, racial slurs and just the overall separation that lies within this, that lies within this institution and the uh, the constant threat of our lives, uh, the, the constant threat on black lives here when it comes down to white supremacy groups and nothing's being dealt with, nothing's being said. Like we said before, only emails are being sent out. Um, this is so far past having to be a debate or a conversation. It's urgency, it's safety, it's our lives that are at stake. So yeah, that's what I have to say. Hi, my name is Michelle Vargas, and I just quickly want to say something. It's not, I'm not going to give you two minutes, most likely, but I was taught from a very young age that excuses get us nowhere, and I very much feel within my three years here that there's always been an excuse to validate the trauma that so many students of color face, such as my freshman year, why did I have to experience and feel so saddened when Donald Trump was elected as president. This campus, I did not feel no protection whatsoever. And I feel right now, we're trying to validate the fact that these slave owner families did some small contribution to like the New Paltz community, when in fact, as a person of color, all these students of color, we are automatically um, oppressed. We're given stereotypes. 
and the excuses that are made against us is generalized from society that black students are bad, um, Hispanic students don't deserve to be here, so why is it that we never get a level of protection but families of slaves do? I like generally don't understand that because they're being protected, but us as marginalized kids, we're not marginalized students, we're never protected. And it's moments like this where we're just trying to voice out our opinions and we're easily being restricted and there's, this is not an equal space to be completely honest because being told I run this show, like that just made me push me a little bit backwards. And just please let me finish very quickly. Somebody has to, you have a meeting. Uh, yes, I definitely do understand, but sir, Sorry, this is my Sorry moment to talk to right now. Eli. Yes, but this is my moment to talk right now. Excuse so me. I just wanted to say again, like why am I being disrupted? Why I'm trying to voice out an opinion. Please listen out to your peers because we are breaking the statistics right here. But being put in this situation where we're not really being heard about why we want this name change just kind of defeats the fact. And I just want to make one last comment for my sister that was shut down very quick. There are so many problems involving racism on campus, and this is the easiest thing we can do to move away from that. And the fact that we need to have this conversation, that it's so hard to get you to see where we're all coming from, is appalling. And I can't help but agree with her 100% that I'm here right now, and I just want you all to respect my other peers that are going to be speaking. Look them in the eyes. The same respect you want, please give it back to us. And that's all I have to say. Hello everyone, um, my name is Alicia, um, I spoke earlier. Um, I just want to bring up something. Um, this conversation has been had in the past um, called the Hasbrook Aid, and people have protested this before, and we're once again having this conversation again um, years later. So this just goes to show that we, you know, generations later are still continuing to have this conversation. So what does that tell you about this issue? It's, it's gone on to affect us. It's more than us sleeping in these places. It is very demeaning as a person who's trying to pursue higher education to have to succumb to these issues. Um, as people of color, the reason why we stress history so much and back on so much is because we wear it. We wear it in our hair, we wear it in our skin. That's why we acknowledge both the good and the bad, but the bad outweighs the good because it has affected us institutionally and everywhere we go. Even certain professors to this day treat us differently because we who we are. Um, I'm not gonna think of no more at the time, but I do wanna say that this is a continuing um, issue and we will continue to have this um, conversation whether or not you guys choose to change the building. Um, and yeah. Thank you. Hello, hello everyone, my name is Jordan, and I would also like to address Mr. Bash on your comment that you run the show, because you do not. We, right here, we are the show, because without us, there is nothing. And just because whatever your ego or your ignorance or your white privilege might put you in that position right now, does that mean that we are here, kind of allow you to just bend the rules and do it whatever, whenever you want? Like I said, you are allowed to extend the time of our council member when you went up because you run the show. So when we as peers ask to extend the time of somebody else, then that's unacceptable, correct? And that's just a transparency of how administration acts in this campus. They bend the rules when they want to, but when it comes to something we want, blind, right? Thank you. My, my friend over here just took the words right out of my mouth. I'm just gonna reiterate that everything he just said but like times 10 because personally I took the, the whole like extending the whole like bending the rules for the council as a form of disrespect and just like just on the topic of, of respect uh, if you want us to respect you you need to respect us back because if you like if you're doing things like this like it's the little things it's not, not even like large things like like extending the time for a council member or letting council members talk when it's not even their time to talk. We're not gonna take that. We're not going to allow that to happen anymore. We are not with that anymore. Like we like we like we just demand like we're just demanding respect now. Like it, it, it came to a point where we're asking for respect, but now I feel like that we're not kind of demanding it at the same time. Like I feel like this like in this room in the past like twenty minutes has been like a power struggle, like in a way. Like like between like you, Mr. Bosch, and us, like just like you, like you run the show, but like we run the show in the in the, in the limelight. Like I lost some tree, I thought I'm done. Okay. <laughs> to be sincere, we're here for you. And I, I can't be any more sincere on that. 
And, and uh, you know, I would say that if you took it uh, some way as a power trip, uh, I'm very sorry because that wasn't the way it was meant. Okay, it just, it, what it meant was common courtesy uh, to Ron Law. He had one opportunity, other people had opportunities to come back again. So it's really a matter of fairness. I would say, I'm sorry if it was perceived otherwise, but that's the perception, not the intention. So I just want you, I just want you to know that. Okay. Can, can I respond to that? I really shouldn't, but I'm, like one I'm welcome to it. Sure. All right. I like. I feel like you. You may think that that's like not big, but you may say that it's like your intent. Like it wasn't your intention, but I feel like there's a difference between like and like what you intended and what we received. Like there's a, like like you may intend it, but we may take it a different. Total. Totally. Get, that's, that's all. I'm I saying. totally get that. Okay. I totally get that, and um, I'm I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay, but just telling you to put it, just have to put it in context. Okay, you get that? And we're really here for you. And the poor, the public forum is kind of an unusual thing for uh, the council. Really, very very rare. I think maybe 15 years ago. So, and I want you to know that because it's such an important issue among the council, but it's certainly <coughs> among the uh, student body. And that's why people are invited here. And, and try not to limit it, but there's a lot of people here. And so I, I just want you to appreciate that. If it wasn't important, we wouldn't be here. And you know, and, 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 and it's not meant to be disrespectful, it's just the opposite of it. You know, I'm a volunteer, people are volunteers. Give our time because we believe in public education, we believe in diversity, we believe in opportunity. Yeah, I, you know, my father went to eighth grade. You know, when I moved to low income housing, it was the nicest place I ever lived. Okay? You know, I can give you the where I come from. Okay? But I'm just, tell, I'm just telling you. So the opportunity for a public education is meant to be equal and it's meant to invite people and that's what, and here is the forum and the issues that are here are very important to the students and I, we I totally get that and it's not meant to be disrespectful. Your perception may be otherwise, but I'm just giving you the way it is. It's our turn to speak. Let us speak, right. please. I uh, work just got plenty of time. You come back up again. You're Here we go. Go ahead. Here we go. <coughs> again, I teach in the Black Studies Department here. Um, I don't see any of my students here, but some people might. Okay. Y'all right, right. might. Y'all might. Y'all might get mad at me right now. All right, but I just need to sign. Y'all to sign off on this. One thing in all of my classes, I teach three different classes. One is Civil Rights, Intro to Black Studies, African American Religion. I say that there are advantages in what? Disadvantages. To everything. There are no problem-free solutions, individuals, ideas, or institutions. It doesn't exist. The other day, we understand that there are a variety of different tensions that are going on, not only in our social environment, but there's also a, which is also a reflection of the capacity that Brother Ron Loss, uh, the complexity of, that Brother Ron Loss spoke about as it relates to our being a human being in this world. Human beings are complex beings. But ideas are complex. Institutions are complex because we live in a complex reality. To that extent, we always need to take our time. And so when, when people stand up and they say, they should do X, Y, and Z, I would say, well, if you were in charge, how would you want it? Everybody's going to talk and go over time because I went over time too and I apologize for that. I'm going to try to keep it short. Right? But that being said, um, I always try to uh, the way that I teach my particular pedagogy, look at the other side and understand that they are human beings too. So there were tragic, tragic events that just happened recently. And I said, well, you know, with respect to uh, anti-black racism, uh, just in the last 10 days, right, people, black people getting killed. I said, well, what was going in the head, head of that human being that killed them? Am I wrong for bringing it up? They're human too. The person who was anti-Semitic and did all this, I asked my students, they brought it up in class, black studies you got to talk about. What was going on in his head? He's a human. Where was he coming from? Mm. I just thought, just, I'm not justifying it. And in my class, I said, it's not about justifying it. It's about understanding it and gaining gain a greater, greater understanding so we can move forward. That being said, um, Kenneth, uh, the, the big, there's a lot of things I want to say. I'm shut. I'm kind of short. I'm going to get out of here. Um, as it relates to this idea of the dollar bill, right? They, they, you know the $20 bill has been changed already, right? It's about to be, yes. Okay, right, right, right. So as it relates to, so you said we're not arguing about that. No, society has already pushed for us that. I'm going to shut up. No, I was going to say <laughs> that's the danger. Is that Wait, if you, you can see that. me afterwards, I would like to talk to you because I would like to make myself available 
to maybe come to one of your classes to continue this conversation. Because I think that there's some things. Yeah. Uh, no, because I think that some of the things which I said are missing, misunderstood. I do have a sense of experience in age. And I'm not saying that that diminishes anything anybody else here, because I sat where you sat at one time. I went in student government because I watched them change the rules for distributive requirements. And I said, if that's the body that can change the rules, that's where I want to be. And I did that on this campus. And you watched so, Leslie get touched by a cop, too. Yeah, I got that's what you just did. Yeah. Right. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're, gonna, we're just, you know, we're kind of time limited. I'm not, I'm not, it's not meant to you, but I'm just going to do a few more and maybe about 10 or 15 more minutes, just so you know, so if somebody wants to jump in line, get in line. Uh, hi, how y'all doing? Um, my name is Anthony. Um, I'm actually a freshman on this campus. I'm a part of BSU, um, the Black uh, Student Union. Um, I have a lot to say, but I'll just try to condense it a little bit. Um, I just wanted to highlight the fact that um, all activity is symbolic activity. Every decision that you make as leaders on this campus, it sends a message. Now, there are racism, as I'm sure all of you know, racism still exists, and it exists on this campus. So to have this outcry of students that are against the, na the names um, you know, on, on the buildings of this campus to, after this outcry, to, to keep those names, it sends a message to the people who have those ideas, those, those racist ideas on this campus, and it tells them that we don't have power. They, they still have hegemony over us on this campus. So I just want to I just want you guys to really think about this decision and think about not only the message that it sends to the students on this campus, but to pr prospective students, and also like uh, some other. I don't. I don't know exactly who said it, but uh, when when we look back on history, I, I believe it was you. I don't know. I don't know your name. You want to be on the right side of history. Right. We want to be on the right side of history. So just really think about this this decision and yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Jasmine Serrato. Some of you may know me as Carmen. Um, I just wanted to bring up that on June 1st, 1843, Isabella Bonfrey changed her name to Sojourner Truth, devoting her life to Methodism and the ab ab abolition of slavery. This was a turning point for Sojourner Truth. And she said that the spirit calls me and I must go. And um, today I'm inspired to believe that Thursday, November 1st, 2018 will be a turning point for the New Post community. And I hope that we can acknowledge the truth and mm. also remember and learn from our history. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Jislaine Garcia. I don't know if this is, <laughs> hello, okay. Um, I feel like what a lot of this happening right now is students of color coming and telling you all what we're feeling. And I feel like sometimes our feelings are not being heard. We have to stand here and be professional and like try to have conversation about a conversation <laughs> that we've been talking about for so long. And it's frustrating and it's, really been built up, which is why we have this kind of reaction happening right now. And I think that with that being said, the fact that this has been a continuous thing, like it's not the first year, it's happened at the second year, it's something that's been going on for so long. Like people have said, it goes beyond what has been done. So what will be done is my question. Um, we've already talked about like being on the right side of history. And as many of the people have said, I came to the school because it was, a diver it was the, one of the most diverse, right? I come from the city. I feel comfortable in the city sometimes because I see so many different people. And going to a campus that looks like me it is awesome. But how is that so awesome when the actions of those who are running the, this, this whole show, because we are running the show monetary way, and we are the ones like here, but you ultimately make decisions that we don't have the power to make, we just have the power to voice them. So my question is, take 
No, my statement is take what we've said today and not only take it and like absorb it and like put it into it, but try to see the perspective that we're coming from. Because although your life might be a different one, like we're telling you our truth and that is also as important. Thank you. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Is it better? Is that, yeah, I'll be too loud here. My name is Shakira Lord. I'm a graduate student. I work in student activities, and I've been at this institution for six years. So something like this for me is very important because this is an impact on who's going to come here in the future. Because as an alumni, will I tell my future kids to come to New Falls if there's no change in this decision? Mm -hmm. Probably not. <laughs> and that's just the frank truth of something as a person of color. I'm not going to send my kids to an institution that does not hear the voices of my people. Because if you are not identifying who we are and validating those things, it makes it very hard for someone to stand up here and support an institution that does not hear us, mm -hmm. right? So I think if you're looking at your decisions of changing the Hasbro Quad names, really think about who is it impacting, who is it for, who is it not for, mm -hmm. and who is it supporting. If it seems like it's a lot of people that look like you around the table and it's not allowing you to see the faces around here that are at this campus, you need to change your decision. Mm -hmm. Because we are here because we believed in New Paltz when we got here. Because of that hope that we believed was going to happen. I gotcha. But if it's not changed, we will no longer believe in New Paltz. And as a teacher, I'm a certified teacher, I will not send my students to New Paltz either. I will not tell them I was alumni at New Paltz that there's no change here. Because why would I send them here if they cannot see themselves here? Thank you. I'm, I'm going to limit the um, period to, to the the three timer in the back here, but to whoever's in line now. No, okay. no I think you misunderstood. Yeah, I, you're, you're fine, but whoever was in line, I didn't mean to, you know, I don't know how far the line goes, it just, I just in case they need to and, and a line. Thank you. It's anyway. just time limited, there's just other things, and we have to deal with things. That's, you know, it isn't that we, I'm trying to stifle comment, but it's fairly exhausting. Thank you. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Rachel Backley. I was an orientation leader last summer. Um, I wanted to talk about the correlation between the hate groups rights on campus, like Identity uh, Europa, and the correlation between keeping these names. Um, I think that in a sense, if you're keeping these names, you're validating the ideals that, Ident that Identity Europa has. Like you're giving them the green light to post those things on campus, to post their posters, and act like what they think is okay. Your, these names, these names of slaveholders, that's what they believe in. And so if you're keeping that, you're in a way you're wordlessly validating what they believe. So in the future, if you're keeping these names, I think that you're gonna have a lot more instances of groups like Identity Europa rising on campus, and that makes so many people feel unsafe walking around on campus on a daily basis. So I think you have to take into consideration people's safety um, as well as their concerns. So. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Sophia Tazzini. I am a student leader, like a lot of people um, in this crowd. Um, I'm a resident assistant in Lenape Hall. Um, and I wanted to address, I'm probably not gonna use the two minutes, but I wanted to address how much courage it takes as a student leader to sit here right now. And I want it really, it's, it's with great pride to speak here and have a voice on this campus. Um, I also wanted to address what um, Mr. Law said earlier. You said you were a student activist on this campus in the 70s, right? 70s? Um, I lived in Shango Hall, um, Shango Hall my freshman year, and I don't know if everyone has seen the murals, the, be the beautiful murals in Shango Hall that student students created. Um, I want to ask why we don't show that to students. The only time that you can see that is if you have access to that building, if you live in that building. Why is it not on our websites? Why don't we give tours and why don't we show the students, the people, the prospective students that want to come to this campus, why don't we show them the absolute amazing resilience that students had? I've been in spaces in this campus where I've heard professionals say that that wasn't a segregated hall. Students of color chose to live there. And I know that that's, that's an apparent lie, you know? That was a segregated hall, am I right? No, that's not? No. It was not segregated. No. 
No. no students no. of color were not segregated there. No, they were not. It was they a chose to live there. So students of color, they stood here and they were, they were, I know in the 70s that they were oppressed on this campus in this country. And they got together and they wanted change. And please, moving forward, please listen to us, not with something to respond with, but please listen to us with empathy. You know, please stay in our shoes. Mr. Law, you were in our, you said that you were in our place at one point. So please don't listen to respond, but please listen as, yes, this is feeling, but this is also truth. This is our lives. We pay to be here. I'm sorry, with all due respect, we pay for the lights in this institution. So please listen to us with respect, please. Thank you. She actually touched upon the very important issue that I wanted to bring up that I believe is similar to what's going on now. Years and years ago, students and faculty alike tried to get the murals covered in Shango, a cultural significant thing that was important to us. And only now, after all of these years, have students of Shango tried again to get these murals covered, and they are finally being covered and preserved the way they should have been the first time this was brought up. I don't want that to happen again. This, we are bringing this up now, and I believe we should take the steps now to change it, rather than another generation later on having to try again, when we could very easily take care of this now. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Now, I'm going to close the public comment period. You're, of course, welcome to stay. But if you'd like to leave, now would be the time. But before leaving, I just would want to thank everybody. I know that many of you have given heartfelt and, I would say, well-founded statements for our consideration. So even if you haven't spoke, your presence has spoke very, very, very loudly. It shows the importance of the issue here, right now, to you, to the students here, the faculty have already expressed their unanimity on change. Okay, and I likewise the student government, but it was very important to hear from the mouths of the students what they felt and what they understand. And, and words do have meaning, they're only names, but they have meaning. So sometimes they become icons. And so that's well appreciated here by the council. And I want to again thank you. I know you have other things to do. You have studies, many, many other things in your own personal life that I know that are required to be attended to and that you put it at a very high level of importance to come here. So I don't want you to think for one second, for one nanosecond, that we take that for granted. And if I was offensive whatsoever to you, it wasn't meant to be offensive at all. It was not meant to be disrespectful <coughs> in any manner. I respect your, each and every one of your opinions uh, their importance are equal to all of us, and they are very meaningful to you, and we take them with meaning as they were meant to be. So I want to thank you for that. And it's, it's just not easy. The issues are not easy. I get it. And they've been, if it was easy, the names would have been changed years ago. I get that. It's not an easy thing. Change isn't easy, and the issue itself brings a lot of other facets to it. So it's not simple. It's not such a simple thing. But again, I want to thank you, as I'm sure, on behalf of everybody here. So thank you very much. Now, if you'd like to leave, that's fine, because it may be some noise. If you want to stay, that's fine, too. And uh, but I just want to tell now, if you take a little break. I'm going to take a little, a little time out, because I have to use the service. Well, for one, I appreciate your coming here and giving us your thoughts. We may not necessarily agree with everything you say, but I give you credit for coming here and giving us your thoughts and opinions. Thank you. And as, as president, even though I'm not part of the College Council, I, I too want to express my gratitude for all of you coming and speaking so clearly and uh, from the heart about what this issue means to, to all of you. I, I often ask what I'm most proud of being president of New Paltz and my ready answer is that it's the work of our students and, and today you uh, fulfilled that promise as well. Thank you. And our faculty as well. Um, I just want to make a comment before everyone then gets up and up to me. Um, as president of Student Association, I just want to say I hear you. I hear you as a peer. I hear you as the president of the school and faculty. I thank you for voicing your opinion as well. 
And once again, I'm doing So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I could try to call. Hi, Kate. It's Rennie. Uh, well, we're in this meeting, and uh, it is late as 6:30. So I'm wondering if you might be able to push our reservation back to seven. It's here in the multi well, in the student union at New Paltz. This is the the college council, and I didn't know it was going to go so long. Uh, Three o'clock. Yep, I can tell you all about it later. Yeah, that's what I say. Tahina was uh, nice enough to use her phone. It, it, ha it has to be done by 6.30 because they have a new... Um, they have a new...
stand here and come and tell us how they feel, how they disappointed, and how they feel like how we should be listening to that. Like, what happened in 1990, we're in a new era. We're in a new era. Like, literally a new era. And what's becoming the minority, the minority is it's slowly rising, but like we're up to, we're almost up to the fifty percent margin, as President Christian mentioned at the last meeting. So, with that being said, we're here, we're here talking about talking about what's the minority right now is soon turning to the majority. So that's one thing we need to remember as of right now. And going on to the comment made by I'm sorry. Hey, and then the mark, um, I know you said that the Lisbon family, am I correct? The correct. family correct. is, we're nice, we're nice with the with giving food and all of that, but um, we're in 2018. No, no form of, not to say that they were nice people back then in the day, we didn't get a share of that. Like, this is a whole new era. If we're saying we're not okay with feeling we're not okay. Otherwise, this room would not be filled with individuals right now to make that statement. Also, <coughs> going back to Mr. Law, what you said about Sojourner Truth, if you're gonna mention about Mr. Hasbro helping Sojourner Truth getting free, let's not forget that Sojourner Truth was also a black woman and was oppressed. So please, let's not forget that as well. Um, and saying that I'm, of, of course, we are bigger than that, and we know we're a strong voice, but our ancestors did not have a voice um, back when slave owners were basically the majority. But now we have the opportunity to have a voice, so that's why we're standing up here and voicing how we feel, that we're not okay with these buildings being other slave owners. So that's what I just wanted to say before I talked about the resolution. And just in context, right now, the, the meeting is just discussion of the issue, of the report and the issue, and now this is a resolution. All right, so the resolution to remove the name of the Huguenot patentees from the Hasbro Residential Complex. So this was submitted on my behalf as an association president and a voting college council member. So I read it says, I recommend that the SUNY New Falls College Council adopt the following resolution. Whereas the buildings in the Hasbro Residential Complex were named for the original Huguenot patentee, Bevier, Crispell, Deo, Dubois, Hasbro, and Lefebvre, who were the first European settlers in New Falls. And like other Europeans who settled in New York, they owned enslaved Africans. And whereas the Huguenot patentee, and their descendants made significant contributions to education and civic life in New Park, <coughs> including supporting the institution that became SUNY New Park, and whereas the Hasbro Residential Complex names have become continuous on campus. Contentious. Contentious on campus, I'm sorry. And whereas President Donald P. Christian initiated a process in August 2017 to consider and study the names of the Hasbro Residential Complex and this charge coincided with the national discourse and conflict about st statues and building names on other college and university campuses. And whereas, President Christian charged the Diversity and Inclusion Council to conduct a comprehensive and inclusive conversation and study during the 2017 to 18 academic year that resulted <coughs> in the Hasbro Building Complex renaming dialogue report and recommendation. And whereas the Diversity and Inclusion Council held multiple forums, solidating broad input from students, faculty, staff, alumni, community members, Huguenot descendants, and historic Huguenot Street leadership, educated the community about the campus history, and studied how other colleges and universities have dealt with the legacy of slavery on their campuses. And whereas the Diversity and Inclusion Council recommended that the names be removed, and whereas the College Council has the authority to name buildings and grounds, subject to the general management, supervision, control, <coughs> and approval of the State University Board, Board of Trustees. Now therefore, be it resolved 
that the College Council accept the recommendation from the Diversity and Inclusion Council and President Donald B. Christian to remove the Huguenot patentee names from the Hasbro residential complex buildings, including Bevier, Chris Bell, Dale, Dubois, Hasbro, and the Fever, and be it further. Resolve that the College Council replace those names and be it further. Resolve that the College Council recommends that the College Administration find other ways to recognize the contributions of the Huguenot patentees <coughs> and their descendants as well as the ingenuous Muncie Mon and the Africans who also lived here. It dated on October 19, 2018. Thank you, Nadella. Now, is there a second? A second. Seconded by Ron Law. Uh, discussion? Uh, discussion. Yes, Anne. Go ahead, Anne. On behalf of the panel. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. I would like to provide some background about the resolution that was endorsed by the New Paltz Faculty Senate, which you have all received, and also talk about some aspects of my own experience that may be relevant to this issue. I attended one of the first forums held by the Diversity and Inclusion Council last year. And I was impressed by the civil and respectful way that students, faculty, and community members discussed their views. But I left that meeting undecided. I'm almost afraid to admit to all of you. <laughs> uh, after all, these events had occurred a long time ago when enslavement was a widespread practice. I had assumed that the buildings were named for multiple generations of the patentee families rather than those specific individuals. I knew that the families had made many contributions to the community and the college over generations, and that some of them had been involved in abolition efforts. And so I wondered, was it really so difficult for our students? Would we be erasing history? How would it affect the town? And is such a major step really warranted? Um, I've always thought of myself as an empathetic individual, and I felt that I could empathize with the students of color who lived in the Hasbro complex, and maybe it wasn't really all that bad. All of that changed for me uh, when I received the packet of information, including the DI Council's report, that was mailed to the members of this body in August. Opened the envelope and encountered the article about the renaming of Thomas Hall at Bryn Mawr College. Um, my mother, my older sister, and I are all alumni of that college. And I attended classes in Thomas Hall. I did research in its archaeology library. I went to coffee hour in its lofty great room, and I had no idea all that time that M. Carey Thomas, the revered president who is often quoted as having said, our failures only marry, as in just marry, um, also believed in the intellectual supremacy of the white races. And per that article, she stated that the immigration of the backward people of Europe, Slavs, Czechs, Southern Italians, and so forth, uh, and the mixing of the races endangers our great position among the nations of the world. Now, my grandmother was one of those backward people. She was of Ashkenazi Jewish descent, and her family moved from Belgrade, Yugoslavia to Vienna just prior to her birth in 1900. She engaged in mixing of the races by marrying a German neurologist during the 1920s. So I owe my existence to relatives in the US who sponsored my grandmother and her two children just prior to the outbreak of World War II. I really can't describe for you the visceral reaction I had to reading that article, to reading those words of M. Kerry Thomas, and learning that my alma mater had not always been the nurturing mother I had believed it to be. Had my mother applied to Bryn Mawr after World War I rather than World War II, she would not have been admitted, and nor would my sister or I. Even worse, Thomas promoted the education of women, not for the sake of women's equality, but because she viewed it as a means to maintain white supremacy. So the emotions I experienced are something I could never have imagined. After all, you know, I graduated almost 40 years ago, and Thomas didn't enslave anyone or send anyone to a gas chamber. Right? But had I known of this history during my undergraduate years, working and studying in Thomas Hall or even going there for coffee would have been abhorrent. And frankly, living in a building named for Thomas would have been intolerable to me. I now understand the ramifications for many of you, for many of our students and faculty, of living and dining in buildings named for the original patentees. I'm also humbled to learn that I am not so empathetic as I had believed. 
I have come to understand the importance of listening to the voices of the students and faculty for whom this is a significant issue. Replacing the names is simply the right thing to do, whether it is supported by a majority, a plurality, or even just one single student. <coughs> However, I am here to represent the college faculty, not myself. And although many individual faculty had participated in the DI Council's work, I needed to know the views of the faculty as a whole. So consultation with the Executive Committee led to the resolution that you have seen, which was forwarded to the Senate. And then senators had several weeks to discuss the resolution with their constituencies. And as you have heard, at the Senate meeting on October 3rd, the resolution supporting the recommendations of the Diversity and Inclusion Council received nearly unanimous support with just two abstentions. I'm confident that if we move forward with these recommendations, we can honor the contributions of the original patentees and their descendants while elucidating their history including their enslavement of Africans and their treatment of the native Muncie people. Developing an exhibit, monument, or con con sorry, <laughs> contemplative space that accomplishes this could be a collaborative effort involving students, faculty, alumni, the Historic Huguenot Street Association, and community members. So I would like to quote from the message sent this past weekend by Chancellor Johnson and H. Carl McCall, chair of the SUNY Board of Trustees, in response to the mass murder in Pittsburgh. They wrote that SUNY was created to provide a high quality education to any individual seeking to create new opportunities for themselves, including members of the Jewish and African American communities who were denied entrance to other institutions. It is up to each of us to expose words or actions that foster intolerance of any kind. If we are to uphold our values, if we are to remain viable and credible, as an institution that welcomes and serves the young people of this state, as the demographics of our student body change during the coming decades, then we must act now, not to erase history, but to launch a new chapter in our history as we write it into the future. A vote, your vote, to advance the renaming to the Board of Trustees is the first step towards that future. On behalf of the college faculty of SUNY New Paltz, I urge you, take that step today. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. And I know you speak not uh, just personally, but on behalf of the faculty as well. And I certainly appreciate the comments and the understanding that you bring to the issue. And um, like many of us, the research uh, and in-depth study done by uh, the council itself on the issue is extremely important. And, uh, and, uh, but real live comments are just as important. So thank you. Any other discussion? I would like to uh, thank everybody. Sure, Vince. First of all, I would like to uh, really <coughs> congratulate Nadella for providing the clarity on this topic to us, the inspiration to consider it, and the courage to bring it this far, given the constituency she's got to deal with. So, And also to all the students and everyone else who made comments today. Thank you so great. However, I want to say that while you guys have had lots of time to talk about this and work on this, we really just got this. We really recently just got this. And so you've had nine months to work on this study and everybody's been able to digest it, et cetera. And I feel as a college council member, clearly there's things for us to talk about. And so what I would suggest is, although that is a well done resolution and it's very clear where we want this to end, I think we should table it for today's meeting and then take the time between now and our next meeting for ourselves to get together further, discuss any other issues, we, any, any more open issues we may have, and then come forward with respectful result, resolution to go put this back on the table at our next meeting. So give us some time, given the input we just received today. So is that a motion? To that is a motion. Point of order. Point. Yes. If somebody seconds that motion, it is not debatable and it is not amendable. A motion to put something on a table is to put it on the table indefinitely. To get it off the table requires a motion to take it off the table that must carry with a majority. My motion is said by next week and to take it up next week. Then that is a postponement that is not a table. Thank then you motion to postpone the until the February meeting. Next meeting. Thank you. That's neither debatable or amendable. So what is the motion? 
So the motion will be to postpone this to act on this resolution to next meeting, giving us time between now and then to reconcile any uh, and have any discussions we will have between now and then. Okay. So the uh, Nadella's motion uh, is being moved to move postpone until the next meeting. Is that well, correct? That, that requires a second. It requires a vote. That's, we need a new, that's the motion. motion. I'm just yeah. reiterating the motion. You got to help me with the uh, technical. Right. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay. Second. So there's no discussion and there's a vote. Well, there's no discussion of a motion to table. I don't know if that's like, correct with the motion to postpone. It is. It is? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I have to say I'm. Oh, you're, you're, um, there's no discussion on the motion, but you're, this is a free forum, so you can say whatever you want. Call to vote. Call to vote. Who's in favor? Of, um, I, I, can I say something before you take the vote? Yeah, you know, I'm in charge, and I'm like totally okay with it. You can say <laughs> the chair can do it. You can that gives you prerogative. Speak to the issue. No, or okay. speak generally. I, I guess I, I'm disappointed uh, to have the, the consideration be postponed without more than the very brief discussion that we've had here today. But but I understand the sentiment and I understand that the council has not had substantial time to review the the, uh, the resolution. And I, I'm just, uh, can I recall, ask a question from the minutes? Wasn't that the last meeting, there were postponement to this meeting? I'm just looking for clarification. Well, that, that, that wasn't really a motion. There was no was resolution. A, was no a resolution. First time a resolution has been presented is now and there's a motion to postpone it. And a second. And a second. So I call for a vote. Are you going to? Well, can we? There's, there's another issue, though. What's the other issue? Because what he was talking about was you all talking about it outside this meeting. And isn't that a? That's a violation. Yeah. You can't do that. Right. So. Excuse me. I bugged everybody to be here no, in person. But aren't we allowed to, isn't it permittable to read the uh, documentation to talk, not as a council, but to each other? That there's nothing against that in any board. No, but it, it, it's so that's my if, 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 my if you have five of you in a conference call, that's a violation. Yeah, I'm not suggesting we okay. call meetings. Oh, you mean for going forward? Speaking on the mm -hmm. issue. That's right. Not in a, uh, it is supposed not to be. A, it is supposed to be discussed in public. Correct. And that's why we all have 50 pages of documents here that we've had for a week or more. You know, so I I, I have a difficult time understanding why we don't know what, why we're not prepared to take this matter up. They just had 200 people for the input today. Just now. You're gonna let me that. Okay. So there's there's the. Uh, I'm, I, I can speak to you later about that. Uh, I'm sure everybody has their own opinion. Uh, so I can't give you the consensus um, of what everybody's thinking is. But I'm supposed to run it um, according to the Roberts Rules of Order. You are. And so I'm required to call for a vote now. So I'll go down. This will be the vote to postpone the um, resolutions. Um, until the next meeting, which I would anticipate will be in early spring. No, late winter. But we don't have a date now. And um, I think I'll do it alphabetically. Um, Mike, your vote. I know there's a majority that wants to do it, and I'll go along with it reluctantly. So I'll vote yes. Vince, they're voting on the table on the motion. Yes. Yes. Postpone. Yes. Postpone. 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 And I'll vote no. So the motion carries. And there'll be another. Take 
Okay, so I'm going to take a few minutes for people to leave, and then we'll resume the meeting. Excuse me, point of information, sure. will we be able to attend and be told Ab the next absolutely. day? No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Uh, absolutely. It's my feeling that will happen again here. How many members do you think have a meeting as opposed to an individual discussion? Five. 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 Meeting, meaning that four council members can get together and meet and not violate the public, public office. We should, we should ask council. We should ask because we're a smaller body now. So we're only seven. So, I mean, the statute says five, but that's, that's because, because the membership is ten, and we only have seven. Yeah, yeah, is a meeting. So, I'm thinking it'd be four. There would be a meeting. Yeah, one on one discussion. Yeah, because I don't think that happens. Okay. No, there's no. other business to attend to. You're welcome to stay. Can I make a couple of items? Can I make a suggestion for the for the the next meeting in the, in the spring, late winter? Uh, and, and that is, I wonder if the council would consider acting on both the postponed motion and the next essential step, which is deciding on uh, replacement names. And I might recommend that the council, uh, well before that meeting, form a subcommittee uh, to develop and implement a way to solicit community input on replacement names before that meeting before that so that if the council if votes the council to change the names, change the name. you, have already, you have already made progress on replacement names. Since I don't think I don't Don is Don capable of capable of that you know, don't as a member as member of the board of, of the council of the council. I will accept I will, what you just said and introduce that as a motion. Okay. 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 Uh, any dis discussion on forming a subcommittee to study potential names in the event that the names are removed? Study potential names and solicit community and input. Solicit community input. Any discussion? Study potential names and So, no. so Ron introduced that as a motion. Is there yeah. a second? Yeah, yeah. 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 second. Second. Do you want to speak to him? Mr. Chairman, may I speak? Yes. Oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah, sure. I, I would just hasten to say that I would shy away from doing that because what we're doing there is we're sort of putting an opinion on which way this vote might go at the next meeting. So I, I would say that we should take up number one. <laughs> at the next meeting whether we're going to approve this resolution that was stated today or not and then we can do that after that which there would be enough time before the end of the school year any other comments um, sure i agree with president christian's motion just because making that decision right there would just prolong in the um, situation it's either yes or no. So I would want to go with President Bush's motion. Just um, one, I just want to say, but officially now we're making, this is Ron's motion? Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's coming this, from the council, I second it. This is a motion now to create a subcommittee? Yes, to study so potential names. Yes. Name or names. Name or name. Any other discussion? Well, we. There's multiple names. If, if the yeah. decision is made to replace the, the building names, multiple replacements are needed. Yeah, it could be one, two, three, four. <laughs> yeah. Any other discussion? Just somebody needs to be up sticks. Um, Can we call the question? Mm -hmm. I just have my comments. I would not want to exchange um, one problem for another problem. But it's just my way of looking at things, um, and I would prefer to bifurcate to have the uh, issue determined whether there is a removal of the names first. But that's just my opinion. And so the question's called. I call for a vote. Call for a vote. All in favor of forming a subcommittee for potential names in the event that your name change. Um, I'll go down. Go down. Mike. Mike. Yes. Mike. Yes. Uh, Vince. Yes. Vince. Yes.
Uh, Robert? Robert? No. No. Ron? Yes. Nadella? Yes. Eleanor? Eleanor? So, um, and I'll say uh, yes. A question, Mr. Chairman? Yes. My question is, if the subcommittee comes up with with some potential names, with input from the community and the uh, faculty and students, doesn't that not have the recommendation of those names to be in accordance with this first uh, resolution, which we're going to take up at the next meeting? Doesn't that also have to be voted on by the council whether to submit those potential new names um, to the council for a vote? That's implicit in it, but not necessarily uh, it. So I would say that it would be some information that could be useful in discussing the resolution itself on removal of the names. So I would say would, that the subcommittee... Would the vote, it, would the vote at the next meeting then be... Number, the first vote taken would be to change the names, which is the resolution that is presently before us, that vote taken, and then if that is a, a yes to change, then the second part would be taken up with the potential new names. The risk of being facetious, I do not have a crystal ball, but that's likely what would occur. But I can't be presumptuous. You know, I can't okay. predict the future. Well, that's, uh, you know, I would say, uh, Robert, that, that was certainly my intention in introducing that notion of launching the process of uh, coming up with a slate of alternative names, replacement names, so that if, as you just point out at that first meeting, uh, during the spring semester, the council votes to change the names, then you can move immediately to the next step of uh, acting on the input from the subcommittee to determine the replacement names, which would allow us to advance the time for taking that resolution, those two resolutions together to the SUNY Board of Trustees. So I'm just to, so we have the notes, correct? There was a vote, but I didn't hear. Eli, did you cast your vote on that? Yeah, I said yes. yes. He said yes. Okay. Sure. All right. So I just want to talk to you all. Um, I know many of you may not have heard the results you wanted to hear today, but the conversation doesn't end here today. As you can see, it was tabled, and we're going to have to talk about this. So I just want you to recognize that. So this is not the last step. This is just one of the steps to move forward. So I applaud all of you for coming out and listening, and I want you to leave here with a hope and faith, and don't think that this is the end, because it's not the end. So thank you. Thank you, Nadella. And, and I would strongly reiterate that sentiment, even though I'm not a member of the council. <laughs> thank you. Now, um, we move on to somewhat uh, mundane matter of budget unless you want to just uh, yep. give me the top you know you know me you can give me the back of the envelope one yeah well it's very short not so sweet uh, do, do we even need the interest of no. time the interest of time that we need to do that no, I, don't. I, I might offer the the perspective that, uh, that right now we're in the middle of implementing uh, this Saturday night we saw the employees and the budget's really good up in the air uh, we're postponing the budget report. Shelly, you're going to work on a, a date for the spring, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. In the meantime, we'll have a subcommittee. And how does that happen now? The we'll just have to get together, get a phone call, see who's available, who wants to volunteer. You'll do that. And maybe you won't pick people now, or okay. No. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Then. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much again. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.